Hello, in this video we'll be exploring the autosomal DNA, so the predicted phenotype traits and GD match results of a Sarmatian man who lived in the Iron Age in the Pontic Caspian steppe, which is the region of modern day East Ukraine and southwestern Russia. This is what he looked like. With minor Shakot, he's predicted to have dark brown eyes, snub shaped nose, and black hair. Now, uh, YSEC actually predicted him to have dark skin, but I don't really trust this prediction so much uh, because snipper free prediction for him is to have white skin. Uh, he did not have BH2 or BH4, and in fact, uh, I think he did not even have BH1. Based on his genotype, I can make the assumption that he did not even have BH1, which is kind of interesting. Definitely very dark eye color. In uh, Komt's Valmet variant, he was heterozygous, which means a Valmet. Uh, not a warrior, but also not a warrior. Typical genotype for a European. And um, he did not have the European mutation that protects against myopia. In fact, he definitely, based on his genotype, probably had myopia. And he did not have the European mutation for lactose persistence, so probably not lactose tolerant, probably lactose intolerant, right? And he also had this very rare genus set that basically increases the risk of Alzheimer's by 11 times, so he might have had Alzheimer's or had family members with Alzheimer's too. Moving on to polygenic traits, he had a very low risk score for Crohn's disease, he had an average risk score for Parkinson's disease, uh, he had an average risk score for brain aneurysm. He had a very below average risk score for coronary heart disease. He had a very below average risk score for type 2 diabetes. Uh, he had a very low risk score for schizophrenia. And he had a very low risk score for bipolar disorder. This is what he scores with Eurogenes K13. Now, uh, keep in mind that he's scoring 8.7% South Asian here, which is kind of interesting. He's definitely got this uh, South Asian shift that other Sarmatians don't. Uh, with the Oracle, he's close to Tatars. Well, I'm, not, I'm saying they don't, but they really do, just less than him. And because of this South Asian shift, he's actually getting modeled as a mixture of Tajik plus Finnish, instead of the typical Dargin or Tabasaran plus Finnish for most of the other Sarmatians, right? Which is kind of an interesting thing to note. Uh, with the Oracle here, with G25, he is closest to Tajik's uh, Rushan, I think. Rushan might be Pamiri, right? It might be Pamiri. And he's actually getting modeled as a mixture of uh, Rushan plus Udmurt plus Lithuanian. And if you don't know, if you know anything about the ethnogenesis of Finnish people, Udmurt plus Lithuanian pretty much uh, describes them perfectly. This is what he scores with MZLP K23B. Now here I don't see any archaic components, so this is definitely a very modern, uh, modern human individual. Uh, with the Oracle, we see the same thing, closest to Tatars, followed by Pamiri. And he's actually getting modeled as a mixture of Pamiri plus Finnish. Which is um, precisely what I've shown you previously with G25. It's precisely the same result, because keep in mind that the Lithuanian plus Udmurt, that adds up to Finnish. So basically Finnish plus Tajik, or Finnish plus some kind of South Central Asian. And here is his result with Harappa World. He's scoring 22% Baloch, and Baloch is like the Caucasus slash West Asia component here. So he's definitely got a lot of this Caucasus component. And he's also got some South Indian component too, and because of that he's getting modeled as, as a mixture of Marduin plus Makrani or Baloch or Brahvi, which all have quite a lot of this uh, South Indian component. This is what he scores with Ponzi and ALK10. You can see the majority component for him is CHG, Caucasus related stuff. Uh, which is kind of typical for Sarmatians. Sarmatians are mostly CHG in terms of uh, the Mesolithic populations that make up their genome. And uh, with the Oracle here, he's getting modeled as a mixture of Marduin plus Baloch or Brahui, which is also very typical for Sarmatian. You can see the other Sarmatians on my channel. They score similarly to him. And with uh, ancient Eurasia K6, the biggest component he's got is ancestral North Eurasian. But what's interesting, he's got 10% East Asian. Uh, which is sort of atypical for Sarmatians, I think. I don't think it's so typical, but maybe just a calculator error here. And with Gidrosia K3, he's scoring 17% East Eurasian, which also seems to be on the higher end for Sarmatian individuals. And you know, at this point I've analyzed quite a couple of Sarmatian individuals, and from what I see, they're, very, they're a pretty homogeneous group. Like, you can tell they there is a Sarmatian cluster, which most of them belong to. There aren't really that many outliers among them. Uh, what, did, what did you guys think about this video? Uh, leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Uh, definitely check out my other videos on Sarmatians and you can actually download this file uh, in 23andMe format from link which is in the description.